How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Sponge about thousand and in this video we're going to talk more about the Atlantic hurricane season more sickly three disturbances which all have the possibility of impacting land but before I begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather you content make sure to like it with links to know and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather they call it. So let's begin I'll take a look at these three disturbances we have the central tropical cyclone 2 which is expected to become tropical storm Bonnie and potentially hurricane Bonnie just before land fall now we've been talking about this tropical cyclone for quite some time and really hasn't strengthened that much or at least as fast as anticipated but it is expected to eventually develop into tropical storm body we also have this other disturbance that's close to the coast of texas that still has a chance of developing into tropical storm calling before it makes landfall so it's definitely something to be aware of along the coast of texas especially around houston where you could experience heavy rain and we also have this disturbance which has a low chance of developing so first let's take a look at invest 95 l which is pretty much just off the coast of texas and we do see that there's a quite there's quite a bit of convection going on especially on the eastern side of this low pressure system where all the rain showers are located in this area now if we were to take a look at the wind shear you see that the wind shear isn't necessarily strong unless you go this um far up north towards louisiana and texas but um the wind shear for the most part around standard circulation is quite light the sea surface temperatures are warmer than average so really the only thing that's going to inhibit this storm or prevent it from developing is the fact that it won't have a lot of time over water to really organize themselves because with tropical cyclones you need you they need quite a bit of time to organize themselves and create a closed circulation for it to be considered a tropical storm it just it um convection isn't the only thing required it also needs a well-defined center of circulation where all the winds are rotating around it and we haven't seen that yet just a cluster of thunderstorms pretty much on the eastern side which is very lopsided at this point we need to see a little bit more convection around the low pressure zone before we could consider this tropical storm column which at this point is uncertain now take a look at the current radar just off the texas coast and we do see that most of the thunder showers are off the coast of houston and galveston but we do have some thunder showers now approaching the texas coast and if i were to continue to move forward in the future you see that the rain showers are expected to continue to move northward which would put more of southern tech of southeastern texas at risk and this is expected to continue over the next several days where in some areas you could receive over five inches of rain which could lead to the concern of flooding throughout the houston metropolitan area so it is only something to pay close attention to this of course if this even does develop into a tropical storm it's going to be primarily a weak tropical storm but it still has the possibility of dumping a very um, heavy amount of rainfall and flash flooding is certainly a possibility again the wind shear you see that it's fairly light so the conditions are conducive for a tropical cyclone to develop the question really is is that will it organize itself fast enough before it makes landfall which is a big question which is the reason why it's pretty much 50 50 on whether or not this so precious and will develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm you see that there isn't a high amount of stable air but there isn't necessarily a high amount of very moist air either that really shows that there's a high amount of lift surrounding low pressure system so it so it has around i'd say a 50 50 shot of developing into a tropical storm calling but whether it does or doesn't you need to pay close attention to heavy rain along the southern texas coast so make sure to be aware of that throughout the houston metropolitan area over um, for today and into the next um, couple of days as this tropical storm or potential tropical storm calling moves northward into Texas. Now, let's move on to our next, um, or actually, let me show you guys the rainfall forecast over the next five days. You see that um that the houston area could receive up to five inches of rain right around houston the houston and galveston area you see that in the oranges you see that it's five to seven inches of rain which is possible so that is definitely 
um, capable of producing flooding and potentially flash flooding at times. So if you're around this area, be prepared for the potential of a pretty big flood threat or a flash flood threat, which is certainly possible associated with this old pressure system. So keep that in mind throughout the southeastern portion of Texas, right around the Houston metropolitan area. But now let's move on to our next disturbance we are watching, which is, of course, potential tropical cyclone 2 which is just north of columbia at this time and you see that it's very disorganized we don't really have an area where the convection is circulating around the low pressure and you see that we're just seeing a very scattered and broad area of thunder showers with no real organization so there are a couple reasons why we aren't seeing this storm develop as initially anticipated or as fast as initially anticipated and the reason why we still don't technically have a tropical storm even though we do have the wind speed that's that's tropical storm force the reason why is be, for one thing is that the wind shear ended up being a little bit stronger than normal you see that um if we were to take a look at these clouds right here you see that we do see clouds in the upper levels drifting towards the um, eastern direction which means which shows that there's a decent amount of wind shear over this low pressure system it isn't a strong enough uh, uh it isn't a strong amount that's necessarily killing this low pressure system or inhibiting it from ever having a chance to develop but it is enough to where it's gonna disrupt its organization process it's been disrupting its organization process so as a result we haven't really seen a central area where all the convection is happening as a result of the stronger than usual upper level winds stronger than anticipated upper level winds and another thing too is that this whole pressure system is moving quite fast at 20 miles per hour so as a result the there isn't a strong enough there aren't strong enough winds on the southern side of this old pressure system to really consider this slow pressure system of having a closed and well-defined center circulation for this to be considered a tropical storm while we are seeing 40 mile per hour winds which is equivalent to tropical storm force associated with this old pressure system it the winds are primarily on the northward side with very little winds on the southern side of this old pressure system which is the reason why there um this hasn't been named tropical storm bonnie just yet the, um, the storm's just moving a little bit too fast to the point where the speed of this storm is pretty much on the speed of the storm along with the speed of the easterly surface level winds are causing this storm to have weak winds on the southern side coming from the west so this is really struggling to develop into tropical storm and has been over the past several days however that is expected to change because as this continues to move west where the wind shear is expected to die down in this area so we will see where so it is expected that this old pressure system will go under a gradual intensification as it heads further westward if we were to take a look at the gfs model at this time here's the low pressure system if i were to continue move forward we do see that the gfs model wants to strengthen it down to around 1002 millibars which isn't necessarily extremely strong but it is at least strong enough to be considered a tropical storm or at least a tropical storm with a well-defined and closed sound circulation that could be around 60 to 70 miles per hour um, at a thousand millibars so that's certainly something to be aware of and while the millibar pressure seems kind of high for a storm that could be that could produce winds of 70 of 70 miles per hour we have to keep in mind that this storm is expected to have a small circulation so the winds will be the energy will be more concentrated over a small area so despite the high millibar pressure it's still able to produce winds of 70 miles per hour and you see it makes landfall somewhere in between the border of costa, costa rica and nicaragua but um so you need to keep that in mind and um throughout nicaragua i expect some coastal flooding along the more vulnerable areas because it still will produce a, a decent amount of strong winds to bring some coastal flooding and storm surge along the coast and but i think the most um the biggest impact with this storm will be the heavy rain threat as you see that the heavy rain will go over costa rica nicaragua even portions of panama will get involved with some heavy rain so you need to keep that in mind if you're close to a flood zone in some of these areas that flooding is likely associated with this storm 
And since it has so much moisture with it as shown by the humidity map. And if we were to take a look at the wind shear, you see that the wind shear will be very light as well. You see that the wind that while we are seeing a decent amount of wind shear right now as a result of this upper level high, you see that the wind shear does subside, which will allow the storm to organize itself a little more. And you see that beyond that, we will see the storm strengthen quite a bit to almost hurt or right around hurricane size just to the south of Metzgo. The good news is that at this point, it's expecting to mainly stay offshore. So um, at least based on the forecast, there's still that possibility that maybe it moves a little bit closer to the shore, which would be a bigger worry for the coast of Metzgo. But at this point, the most likely scenario is that this will stay offshore, but you still need to pay close attention to high surf throughout the Pacific. So make sure to keep that in mind but um, throughout Costa Rica and Nicaragua the impacts are pretty much certain at this point expect a heavy rain to expect gusty winds potentially a hurricane could make landfall and expect coastal flooding along the coast so make sure to keep that in mind and the European model is pretty much taking a very similar forecast so the certainty is high and you need to prepare throughout Nicaragua and Costa Rica for a strong tropical storm to maybe low end hurricane impacts now taking a look at what the ensemble members are saying we do see that most of the ensemble members want to take this onshore towards Costa Rica and Nicaragua and you see that um, after after hitting Central America, this is expected to strengthen almost uh, or right around hurricane status. But the good news is that most of some members take are taking it offshore. So hopefully it stays that way. And taking a look at the model intensity guidance, we do see that most of them expect this to make landfall right around tropical storm status. But we do see that um, this could become hurricane status during the later hours as it enters the eastern Pacific. Um, so, but the good news is that. This is expected to stay offshore, but just keep in mind of high surf along the southern Mexican coast and rip currents because those are unfortunately one of the leading causes of weather related deaths um, throughout the world. People underestimating the rip current mix, so keep that in mind throughout southern Mexico. Now, um, if I were to show you guys my forecast when it comes to the strength of Tropical Storm Bonnie, we do see that um this tropical storm is expected to move into um, costa rica and nicaragua i'd say right around strong tropical storm status around 65 to 70 miles per hour this should strengthen gradually as it heads towards central america and then you see if we were to continue to move forward you see that um this i'm expecting this to uh, increase the uh, category one status just south of metzgo and you need to still be aware of this throughout southern metzgo because you're still in the cone of uncertainty so there's, there is a possibility this could move northward but um at this point the most likely scenario is that it will stay offshore we just need to see how far offshore to really determine the impacts of southern of uh, southern um southern metzgo will experience so keep that in mind but anyways guys uh thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys have a good day